Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a floor value equation. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications and let's get started. So we have this equation where 8 is divided by the fractional part of x, which I'm going to define in a little bit. That is equal to 9 over x plus 10 divided by the floor value of x. So we're going to solve for x values here and let's go ahead and start with the definition of floor value and the fractional part of x. Okay. So how is floor value defined? Well, the floor value of x is basically the greatest integer. It's also called the greatest integer function, less than or equal to x. So basically, it's, it's kind of like we could probably define it as rounding the number down to the nearest integer, but that's not necessarily the... Well, if you say rounding down, it's always true because we're always rounding down. Okay, that's why it needs to be less than or equal to x. So, for example, if you're uh, looking at the floor value of pi, that's going to be 3 because 3.14. But if you look at the negative pi, that's kind of interesting. It's not going to be negative 3 because negative pi is negative 3.1 something, and that is going to be negative 4 because the number, the floor value is always less than or equal to x. So we can safely say that the floor value of x is always less than or equal to x. Now, now comparing these two numbers, the floor value of x and the x itself, we're, we're kind of uh, looking at the difference here. So for example, if you consider pi, 3.14, and then the floor value of pi is 3, so the difference is 0 0.14. So the fractional part of x is basically then defined as, the fractional part of x, which we use the braces for that, is defined as x minus the floor value of x. Okay, so if you take away the floor value of a number from itself, you end up with the fractional part of it. So in this case, for example, suppose x is equal to 3.14. And this is obviously not exactly pi, but just an approximation. And in this case, the, you know, the fractional part of 3.14 is just going to equal 3.14 minus the floor value of 3.14, which is 3, and it's going to be 0 0.14. Okay, that's basically how we define the fractional part of x. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our equation. So one of the things that's significant about the floor value and the fractional part of x is that the obviously so for example if you think about it like if x is an integer then um, it, it's going to be zero so basically you're looking at a value between zero and one here zero uh, is inclusive okay so looking at uh, from that perspective our equation eight divided by the fractional part of x is equal to nine over x plus ten over floor value of x here, you notice that since this number is, obviously, it can't be 0 in this case, right? Uh, since this number is less than 1, when you divide 8 by that, you're basically going to be getting something greater than 8, right? So, we can safely say that 8 divided by the fractional part of x is greater than 8, okay? Which implies that the right-hand side is also greater than 8. So, let's take a look at it from that perspective. And this should also be greater than 8. So, that gives us some bounds. That's what we're going to work with here. Because with floor value equations, a lot of times the inequalities play an important role. Okay? Now, if you look at this equation from that inequality perspective, notice that, for example, if x is equal to 3, what are you going to get? If x is equal to 3, then we're going to be getting 9 divided by 3 plus 10 divided by 3. And this is going to give you 3 plus 3.3 .3 something repeating and the sum is not going to be greater than 8. Make sense? So for x equals 3, this sum, this inequality is not satisfied. What about anything greater than 3? Obviously, as x is greater and greater, this left-hand side is going to be smaller. I'm talking about this left-hand side. So it's never going to be greater than 8. So we can safely say that for x is greater than or equal to 3, there are no solutions. Wow, this is really cool, right? This is nice because now we were able to find an upper bound. Well, why is this an upper bound though? Or do we have a lower bound? So let's kind of look at some negative numbers, right? Or numbers that are in the uh, range of 0 to 1. But first of all, what happens if x is negative? Well, if x is going to be negative, then let's take a look. And by the way, uh, this expression, since x is always, the fractional part of x is always non-negative, this is always going to be greater than zero, obviously, right? For any any number, well, uh, yeah, it's going to be greater than zero. So what is that supposed to mean? Well, if x is negative, 
then you will have 9 over x plus 10 over the floor value of x. This is going to be a negative quantity, but this is impossible. You can't have one side greater than 0, the other side less than 0. So that means that x needs to be greater than or equal to 0, but we already talked about it. x cannot equal 0, which means that x needs to be greater than 0. We know that for sure. And x needs to be less than... X needs to be less than 3, so we basically have that X needs to be between 0 and 3, non-inclusive. Okay? That's basically what we get as a result. So we have a lower bound as well as an upper bound, which is really nice because we're only going to be looking at the intervals. And it makes sense to break down this interval into sub-intervals, such as what happens, for example, if, if X is between 0 and 1, right? Well, if X is between 0 and 1, then basically from here the floor value of x is going to be 0, right? And that's going to make our expression undefined. So x cannot be between 0 and 1. This case does not work. What happens if x is between 1 and 2, right? So now we're going to look at the second case. And we can number these cases. So we're going to be looking at case by case. Case number 2, what if x is between 1 and 2? Okay, cool. Now, if x is between 1 and 2, this means that the floor value of x, so you're talking about something like 1.5, 1.2, 1.09, whatever. The floor value of x is going to be 1 because you're rounding it down, right? And as you know, the fractional part is just the number itself, x minus the floor value. So it's going to equal x minus 1, right? It's easy. So now our equation turns into this. 8 over x minus 1 is equal to 9 over x plus 10. Great. So now we're going to solve this equation under this condition that x needs to be between 1 and 2. So let's go ahead and take a look at this equation from that perspective. Now, how do you solve it? Well, first of all, notice that x cannot be 0, x cannot be 1. So that's, co that's good. Let's go ahead and make a common denominator here. And let's see what that looks like. 8 over x minus 1 is equal to 9 plus 10x divide by x, and let's go ahead and cross multiply here, and we should be getting something like 8x is equal to, let's go ahead and distribute the x, 9x plus 10x squared, and then I have minus 9 minus 10x. So let's go ahead and put everything on the same side so we get a quadratic. So 8x subtract from 9x is going to be 1x, and then this is going to be negative 10x, right? Negative 10 plus 1 is going to be negative 9, so it's going to be negative 9x minus 9. So let's go ahead and solve this equation by using the quadratic formula. I'm not really going to look for factoring. It's probably factorable, but anyways, let's just use the formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, and that's going to be 81 minus 4 times 10 times negative 9, which is going to make this positive. Okay, let's see if you get a nice quadratic or perfect square from here. Let's see. Okay. So obviously 9 is factorable, we could probably pull that out. If we pull out a 9, that's going to be 9 plus 40, which is 49, that's cool. Because now the square root of that expression is going to be 7 times 3, which is 21. So that was, that was probably 441, which is 21 squared. Anyways, so this is what we get. Obviously 9 minus 21 is going to give us a negative answer, we don't want that. So we want 9 plus 21 divided by 20, and that should be 3 halves. Now. Does 3 halves satisfy our initial condition that x needs to be between 1 and 2? Yes, it does. Therefore, we'll accept it. So x equals 3 halves is going to be a valid solution. Okay? Now we're going to look at the second case scenario, which is x is between 2 and 3. Okay? Let's take a look at that one. That's going to be condition number 3 or case number 3, rather. x is between 2 and 3. Now, remember our original equation was... 8 over fractional part of x is equal to 9 over x plus 10 over floor value of x. So if x is between 2 and 3, its floor value is going to be 2 because it's going to be 2 point something, right? Less than 3. And its fractional part, as you know, is going to be x minus floor value of x, which is going to equal x minus 2. So we get a different expression every time if we know where x lies. Okay? Cool. Now let's go ahead and do the replacements. 8 over x minus 2 is equal to 9 over x plus 10 over floor value of x, which is equal to 2. So we were able to basically uh, here get a, what's it called? Um, get a numerical value for floor value of x because 
x lies in a certain interval. And we were able to do that here as well because 10 divided by 1 is equal to 10. Make sense? Okay, cool. Now, this is going to be 5, or we can just make a common denominator without simplifying. And that's going to look like 8 over x minus 2 is equal to 9 times 2 is equal to 18 plus 10x divided by 2x, which is obviously can be simplified later, but that's okay. Uh, this is going to give us, let's see, should I divide by 2? Okay, fine, let's do it. 9 plus 5x divided by x, and then 8 times x is equal to, let's go ahead and distribute the x first, 9x plus 5x squared, and then distribute to negative 2, negative 18 minus 10x. Okay, and then let's put everything on the same side like before, 5x squared, this is going to bring a positive x again, so it's going to be negative 9x minus 18 is equal to 0. Got to remember that x is between 2 and 3 in this case, so let's see if we get any, any solutions from here. And when we solve this using the quadratic formula, it should look like negative b, which is 9, plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Obviously, that's going to be a positive sign and we're going to get this. Again, 9 seems to be a common factor, so I can pull it out. Let's see what that gives us. Uh, and if I pull out a 9 here, I should be getting 9 plus, so I should, uh, I'll get a 2 here. Uh, 4 times 5 is 20. 20 times 2 is 40. So I'm getting 49 again. So that's going to be 3 times 7. So 9 plus minus 21 over 10. And this should be, with the positive version, 3. x equals 3. Now, x equals 3, as you know, is not between 2 and 3, first of all, and we've already seen that x equals 3 does not satisfy the equation because when we plug it in, it just doesn't work because it doesn't satisfy the inequality that we received. Okay, so we're not going to accept the solution, which means that the only solution in this case is going to be x equals 3 halves, and our original equation one more time, 8 divided by the fractional part of x is equal to 9 over x plus 10 over floor value of x. Okay? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And don't forget to check out the merch. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe and take care. Bye-bye.